everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Linux Lite version 5.4. Now this is a version of Linux that is based on Ubuntu's latest long-term support and is meant for people who are new to Linux, who maybe are also running machines that are lightweight. I'm not going to say are like low end because I don't think that Linux Lite is actually like completely the lowest end you could go in terms of a Linux distro that's meant for older hardware. It has quite a few modern features in it that we'll see as we jump in here. So uh, let's jump into it and see just how light Linux Lite is. Now we're going to be installing this in a virtual machine. So I've already set up the, uh, the machine here so we should be able to just get it started. And we'll start Linux Lite. Oops, I got it actually. Yep. That screen that we just saw there was typical of an Ubuntu install. It wasn't quite as neatly designed because normally the text that's up there at the top is in the center and there's like an icon. Why they ma made it like that, I'm not sure, but it was okay. It checks for errors in the install medium. It has a startup sound. Now, I'm not actually sure what desktop environment this is. This is probably LX Cute, I would guess. Before we just install it, let's find out if NeoFetch is here. Nope. I'm just curious what the desktop environment is because curiously you can't find that information on their website. I looked. All right, so actually this is XFCE. Interesting. Okay. Um, I should probably should have recognized that from the beginning. It's very well designed for an XFCE thing because normally the XFCE stuff out of the box is kind of textured. It has layers upon it. This is all very, very flat, kind of like Alex Cute, or what at least what I remember Alex Cute being. But this is XFCE, so that's cool. Why they don't promote that on their website, or at least I didn't find it on their website. So they do have their own custom logo, which is cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and install this thing, shall we? Interestingly, their welcome app does not actually show you or prompt you to install the thing itself. So we're going to have to close that and click on the thing on the desktop. That right there is probably not the most user-friendly thing. Now, this is Calamari's, it looks like. This might be... No, this isn't Calamari's. That's dumb. This is the Ubiquity installer. It's just prettier than the Ubiquity installer. I didn't... <laughs> I'm not expecting the Ubiquity installer to be, you know, pretty. There's no minimal option here. But I'm assuming it's because it's meant to be minim minimal, you know, on on its own. It does have the experimental ZFS thing here, but we're not going to use that. We're just going to install it. Continue. New York is fine. And we'll name this uh, Light VM. Because why not? Matt is fine. We'll create a strong and complicated password. Hopefully DT hasn't uh, trademarked that. <laughs> yeah. If so, I've just copyright infringed DT. All right, we're installing. We'll see how long this takes. It's at uh, 745. Okay, that took about three and a half minutes, so not very long at all. Let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, continue testing here and then shut down properly. That way I can remove the install medium from VirtualBox instead of restarting because not all the time will VirtualBox remove it properly. And we're just going to shut down here. And then we'll do this stuff here. 
Oops, I was gonna, I was gonna delete it completely. That would have been. Matt, you're starting the video over. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it, this time it removed it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, and really, I can never figure out why it does and or when it will and when it won't. It's very weird. I'm sure it's something that I'm doing wrong. All right, here we go. Looking at startup times. Okay. Uh, first of all, that wallpaper. Oh boy, that's ugly. Um, just my opinion, but those colors. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not impressed with the wallpaper. We're gonna change that almost immediately. Desktop settings, maybe? Yeah, I think so. That's way. That's so much better. Okay, before we get started on anything, let's start up a terminal here and see just how light this is. So we're going to do free dash M. And we're looking at 608 megs out of the box. Now, I did start up that wallpaper thing, so it's possible that that's taking up a little bit of room. I don't understand why that would stay running in the background, but it's possible. The welcome app is here running as well. So that will be taking up some space. 608 megs is not the lowest I've ever seen. So there, I've seen some XFCE things that have gone down to the 300s. I've seen Alex Cute down in the 300s. Obviously, if you're running just a stock window manager, a lot of the times you're going to get down to the 300s. But 608 is not huge. It's not the gigabyte plus that you'll often expect to see with something like GNOME or something like that. So uh, not terrible. Let's look at the kernel. So you name dash A. So we're running the Linux kernel 5.4, which is the previous LTS kernel release, and the one that come, came with the Ubuntu LTS as well. So I don't use Ubuntu, so it might be possible that the 5.10 kernel has been backported to the LTS. I'm not sure. So uh, that's something you might have to keep in mind. So if you want, obviously, if you're looking for the latest and greatest, you're probably not going to be looking at Linux Lite. This is meant to be something that's uber stable, something like Debian stable, or uh, the, obviously the Ubuntu LTS. These are, these things are meant to be workhorses that you just let sit for a long time, you know, on your computer until the next LTS comes out. So we can close that now. So here we got the oh, the welcome app. So We'll just see if we can make it a little bit bigger. So we got install updates, install drivers, set a restore point, install language support, and select darker light themes. Let's try that first. So we're gonna Okay, so dark theme applied. I would say that's not true. <laughs> at least the at least the welcome app does not seem to be in the dark mode. So let's let's uh, open up Thunar here. So the Thunar did go to the dark theme. Now this is the the Adapta GTK theme, I believe. Uh, so I've always thought that that was very good looking. So it, it, interestingly enough, it does not go with that pea color yellow background that they decided to choose. So uh, I'm gonna come back to that wallpaper quite often. So let's see if there's like a back button. Is there like a back button? A big home button at the top, okay. Uh, I don't need to go through do any of that stuff. Online support, help menu. Now supposedly the help menu manual help menu help manual has been updated for this release now obviously I mean that seems like an obvious thing but supposedly it's different than it was before now I can't actually go through and tell you whether or not that that's true and whether or not that applies to this online version or if that's just the one that's located on the computer which I actually don't see so supposedly it's located on the system well, right here it's, it's located right here okay so yeah these are exactly the same which is good all right so you, this is the online version this is the one that's located on your system so start here i'm not actually gonna go through and do a lot of this actually you know what i bet you this is on their website and this is where it lists S L X F C E as the desktop environment like i, like I, I did I did go through and look 
on their website to see what desktop environment they were using. And granted, I should have recognized this as XFCE right away. Because I like XFCE, but it, that flat look to it makes it look like LXQ to me. But you got to remember, I haven't also used LXQ in ages, so I might just be making this up in my mind. Uh, it might be a complete figment of my imagination, which is so that's completely possible. Anyways, the help manual supposedly is one of the things that had, was a big focus of this release, and it looks highly extensive. So if you're new to Linux, chances are this manual here will be something that will really help you. It'll show you how to go through and install software, and oh, it has Synaptic. That's interesting as a as a package manager, because Synaptic is not what you'd call new user friendly. It's just not. All right. Well, we're gonna explore the so the software here in just a second. We we'll finish with with the welcome app, hardware database, U UEFI, and secure boot, contribute. So there's not. I mean, it's a nice looking welcome app, but not necessarily. I mean, what do you want from a welcome app? It has the help manual. It has the, the buttons you want to get started on. That's really all you need. So we'll close that. So we talked about the changed user manual, but the, another thing that supposedly has changed is an updated version of the Papyrus icon theme. Again, that's just one of those things where I just don't know enough about it to tell you whether or not this is actually something that looks different than it did last time or not. But I've always liked the Papyrus icon theme. It's always been very well put together. It's probably the most popular icon theme out there for Linux. It's just something everybody seems to like. It's not offensive to anybody's eyebrows. <laughs> I will want to offend your eyebrows. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good. Oh, I write that one down. That's good. Uh, so we got 10 new wallpapers, which we sh looked at here a few minutes ago. Which 10 those are, I you know, who, who the hell knows. Let's see if we can actually... Oh, look at that. That touch target was not very great. These wallpapers... Hmm. Wait a minute. What the... Somebody's getting sued. Seriously, that is seriously. Is, was that Miller Lite? Is that the Miller Lite logo, but with Linux Lite? Interestingly, that, that that's interesting. Okay, um, that's a cool wallpaper. Um, so they have a couple really cool wallpapers here. These ones here in the center with the Linux Lite logo. Some of them are not bad. The dark ones here aren't bad. These yellow ones don't use those. Those are horrible. Uh, and then they have a car that no one actually ever owns. Is that a, some kind of Beamer? I mean, nobody ever... I mean, seriously. Suicide doors look cool, but n not functional in the least, I don't think. You're just going to bang your head on those. You know you will. Anyways, you can close that. Okay. So the rest of the changes in this particular version of Linux Lite appear to be with UEFI and incremental updates to certain applications. So let's go ahead and go through some of the apps, shall we? All right, so we're going to start here with my computer, which is just a list of all the, the your folders, which is interesting to have there. This is this is the is it was this the brisk menu is that what that's called? I think that's what that's called. So we got the settings here at the top. Color profiles, desktop disks, this is GNOME disks, uh firewall uh configuration. So that's probably setting up UFW light, light auto login. Like desktop. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Although, so this should, will allow you to choose what desktop icons are on the desktop. Okay, so I was kind of hoping that was actually going to let you choose the desktop environment. That'd be cool. Uh, scrolling down a little bit more, uh, network shares. That's going to be like Samba, probably. Uh, light software. So this tool is easily installed to remove popular software. So let's see what this actually is. Would you like to update your software sources now? Sure. So we're going to install some software. Okay. So this is a custom tool, obviously. So I could, you can hit the control key to install multiple. That's cool. So that kind of reminds me, if you use Pamac on Arch, you can go through and install multiple things at the same time. 
Games Pack, these are things like G Genie, Handbrake, High Device Manager, Instant Messenger, Cody, Music Player, Nitro Share, OBS is here. Packet Password Manager. This is so this is KeyPass XC, okay? Play on Linux, Redshift is here, Simple Screen Recorder, Skype, Sound Juicer, Spotify, Steam. Because this is based on Ubuntu, you'd, you'd expect your software selection to be very robust, and it is. So pretty much any piece of software that you want, you'll be able to get right through here. So this means you don't have to go through and use Synaptic if you don't want to. So you can also remove software using the same tool. That's cool. Um, obviously, I don't have any software here installed. But we can just close that. That's a neat little thing. It reminds me a little bit of... The app center, app, the app center thing that MX Linux. No, it wasn't MX Linux. It was Sparky. I think it was Sparky that has that. Um. Anyways, kind of reminds me of that. Accessories. We got archive manager, backups. Uh, that's probably is that gonna be like time shift? Maybe I don't know. Not actually sure about backups. This is no. This is Deja Dupe. Okay, so that's a good one. Deja Dupe has always been really good for making uh, copies of your disks or backing up and stuff. Calculator, file search, fonts, screenshot. Prob this is probably the XFC screenshot shooter yep thing. Yep. Uh, let's see, graphics. We have GIMP installed, pre-installed. Uh, this is going to be GNOME photos maybe? No, this is Shotwell. Okay, Shotwell. Okay, so that's a that's another big program that's very very popular. Uh, Paint, which is probably like an MS Paint clone. We have Firefox and we have Thunderbird for Mail. Multimedia, we have VLC and Pulse Audio. So that's something that's really nice so far that I've seen. There aren't like six uh, ways of playing media. This is just VLC, and that's the way it should be. I mean. You should either have MPV on here or you should have VLC on here. You really don't need both. You don't need any of the other things. Now, if you want a application that manages a music library, then you can have something like Lollipop or whatever on there as well. I guess that would make sense. But a lot of distros you find, you download them and they have like four different ways of playing a multimedia file. And it's just complete bloat. Just choose one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So we have LibreOffice here. And that's pretty much it. So in terms of package selection, very well done, I, f I feel. There's nothing here that overlaps with anything else. There are tools that you're for sure going to use. I mean, everybody installs GIMP for the most part. Everyone has some kind of photo manager, depending on what they use. Everyone obviously uses, you know, I was going to say, like, everybody uses Firefox, but that's not true. Everyone has a web browser and a mail client installed that they want to use. Whether it's these or not, at least you're not seeing something that's two different mail clients or something. And, you know, I've seen that before. So, like I said, application selection is very, very good. And it's, it is mi minimal. So, that's what you'd expect with something with light in the name. So, let's take a look at the settings. So, this is the XFC settings panel. There's not going to be a ton here that is going to be unusual we'll take a look at the themes that are installed we got adapt a no nocto that that's um i believe that was first popularized like but was it manjaro that first popular popularized it i'm not sure uh, at Aweta, which nobody knows how to pronounce correctly uh gray bird which is going to be your redmond version but slightly modernized, it looks like. So if you remember the Redmond theme that are that's on a lot of these is like the Windows 98 kind of thing. But this has a dark, dark version, high contrast. And we'll go back here. Yeah, that. so not a ton of themes installed, but uh, definitely ones that are good looking. So we, for icons, Adaweta, E-Papyrus, Gnome, they should really just get rid of that. No one... <laughs> Those are crazy icons. Um, high contrast. High contrast. Uh, humanity, humanity dark. Login icons. Papyrus. Adapta. These are all versions of the papyrus. And then Ubuntu Mono. So those are the Ubuntu, the really old Ubuntu icons that they they haven't used in quite a while. Okay, so interestingly, you pop up on, you hover over something, you get a cool pop up. 
that's cool. All right. We'll go back to all settings. I don't think there's anything else here that we... T oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold the phone. Light tweaks. What this? What is this? Okay. Select the task you wish to perform and then click the begin button. So, boot up fix. This restores the boot up splash stream for Linux Lite. Clear memory. So, this is free up memory on your system. Default web browser. Display overall disk usage. Firefox cache. Hibernate suspend, host name, kernel installer. So this will allow you to install specific kernels, which is cool. Not all distros come up with something like that. You Sometimes you have to just use the terminal to do it. Locate large files, log, log archives, login and layout options. Manage save session, numlock settings, package system repair, preload apps, system D log cleaner. Uh, so this is the nerdy stuff. So this kind of reminds you of like... It has some of the stuff that you'd see in like Bleach Bit or something. Uh, Whisker menu. It even tells you things that you could absolutely mess up your system with. So if you want uh, changing your host name or messing around with the kernel is always going to need to be proceeded with caution. So that's cool that it warns you. So that you can tell that they're very much trying to aim this towards new users. But also allow them to kind of spread their wings a little bit and, you know get into the nitty-gritty details of Linux and tweak things because I mean that's what Linux is all about being able to tweak stuff so this is really cool I really that's really I mean when I first thought saw Linux tw or light tweaks here I just figured it was going to be something like GNOME tweaks uh, so yeah that's cool uh, light welcome light user manager light widget what is that enable light loot so that's just a that's a conky okay close cool nothing else here that really catches my fancy so I think that that's going to be it that's a first look at Linux Lite version 5.4 now it even says in the release announcement that this is a very modest release so I believe now I've never tried Linux Lite before so this is my first time I'm pretty sure that they're not the kind of distro that goes through and radically changes stuff every time they do a release. So that's not what they're meant to be. They're meant to be very stable and something that's very much aimed towards someone who's not used Linux all that much or who's not as familiar with the other desktop environments like Ubuntu, uh, you know, like using their good version of GNOME or regular GNOME or even KDE, which is can be very, very overwhelming for a new users. So... Um, I was highly impressed with Linux Lite. Now, is this something that I would use? No. Um, mostly because I'd miss the AUR. <laughs> I guess that's the reason why. I, I mean, in, in terms of this or Zubuntu, so that's the, that's the real question is use this or Zubuntu. And I think that if you're using, if you're on a system that has not a very big hard drive, this is the one that would be better to go with because it has fewer programs. If you install Zubuntu, you're going to get quite a bit more. Um, now, I haven't used Zubuntu in quite a while, so it's possible that it's not as heavy as you know I, I seem to be remembering, but I, I probably is going to have at least a little bit more in terms of pre-installed applications. Uh, you're also going to have to put up with things like the GNOME Software Center and Snaps and stuff like that. That's not something... No, I didn't actually go through and look and see... I'm assuming that Linux Lite uses Snap as well, so let's go ahead and find out here. sudo snap install mailspring. Okay, so Snap is not installed, so let's see if I remember how to install Flatpak. A few moments later. Ooh, I, and I spelled it wrong. I can't spell worth a damn. Right, so Flatpak isn't installed either, so neither Snap or Flatpak. So going back to what I was saying earlier, if you're choosing between Zubuntu and this, if you're looking for an XFCE-based distro and it's meant to be running on hardware that's either not powerful or doesn't have a lot of storage, Linux Lite seems to be the one that you should choose because it has way fewer options in terms of, or has way fewer applications pre-installed. Because when you go to a Zubuntu, I'm pretty sure you're going to get Snap installed just out of the box. So, 
that's a thing. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to us and make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast at the fa at, at the Facebook at the LinuxCast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I, my words today just did not like working very much. <laughs> I took the day off yesterday for the, from a real video and man, can I, it, it's like one day, just complete rust. Anyways, I'd like to thank, take a moment to thank our current patrons, Tevon, Marcus, Maglin, Mark, Merrick, and Camp. Words, I'm telling you guys, this, I, words are hard. <laughs> I, I, I need to hang it up and take a nap. Thank you for watching. Thank you for support. I'll see you next time.